Welcome, dear vets, to your own academy and the channel Wet Guide. Today, we are going to have a tutorial on a very interesting and demanding topic for pet practitioners and the scholars currently studying in the veterinary field. So today, our main topic of discussion is fracture, in which we first of all discuss some brief things about structures of a long bone, and then we will learn about various classifications of fracture. So let's begin. Some brief anatomy of long bone to make you better understand regarding fracture. A long bone has two parts, a diaphysis and epiphysis. The diaphysis is a tubular shaft that runs between the proximal and the distal ends of the bone. The hollow region in the diaphysis is called the medullary cavity, which is filled with yellow marrow. The walls of the diaphysis are composed of dense and hard compact bone. The wider section at each end of the bone is called the epiphysis, which is filled with spongy bone. Red marrow fills the spaces in the spongy bone. Each epiphysis meets the diaphysis at the metaphysis, the narrow area that contains the epiphyseal plate or the growth plate, a layer of hyaline cartilage in a growing bone. When the bone stops growing, the cartilage is replaced by osseous tissue and the epiphyseal plate becomes an epiphyseal line. The medullary cavity has a delicate membranous lining called the endosteum, where bone growth, repair and remodeling occurs. The outer surface of the bone is covered with a fibrous membrane called the perosteum. The perosteum contains blood vessels, nerves and lymphatic vessels that nourish compact bone. A fracture can be differentiated on various bases. So a fracture can be classified as on the basis of relationship with environment, on the basis of displacement, on the basis of fracture pattern. We will see each classification in detail one by one. So starting with the basics, how will you define a fracture? A fracture can be defined as break in the structural continuity of the bone or it can be defined as discontinuity in the continuity of the bone. Looking at the classification of fracture on the basis of relationship with environment. On this basis, fracture can be classified as an open fracture, also known as a compound fracture, and closed fracture, which is also known as a simple fracture. So what basically is an open fracture is that there is a break in the skin and underlying skin tissue leading to a communicating fracture hematoma. Open fractures have further two types of classification, Gastelo classification and Muller's classification. We will see these classifications one by one. Gastelo classification for open fracture is further divided into three grades. We can say fracture is Gastelo grade 1 if wound is less than 1 cm and there is a minimum soft tissue injury. We can say fracture is Gastelo grade 2 if wound is more than 1 cm and there is moderate soft tissue injury. And we can say fracture is Gastelo grade 3 if wound is more than 10 cm and is severe muscular devitalization. As we have previously seen, there are three main segments as proximal, diaphyseal and distal. According to Muller's classification, diaphyseal fractures can be simple, wedge or complex as clearly shown in the image and proximal and distal fractures can be extra articular, partial articular and complete articular which is also clearly shown in the image. Now we will see what basically is a close or simple fracture. It is a fracture in which bones break but skin remains intact. Looking at the classification of fracture based on displacement. Based on this, a fractured bone might be displaced or non-displaced. See, we used three different terminologies for displacement fracture. Or you can say, displacement fracture can be of further three types. Translation, 
angulation and shortening. We will see each terminology separately. First, we will see about translation. Translation is the sideways motion of the fracture, usually described as the percentage of movement when compared to the diameter of the bone. Direction of distal fragment decides the translation severity. What is angulation? Well, basically, it is the amount of bend at a fracture. And it is described in degrees. Angulation is described with respect to the apex of the angle as shown in the following figure. Now talking about shortening. It is the amount which shows how much a fracture has collapsed or shifted proximally and it is expressed in centimeters. So a fracture on the basis of patterns can be transverse, oblique, spiral, comminuted, segmental, stellate, or a green stick fracture. We will see each pattern details in our next slides. A transverse fracture is a specific type of broken bone where the break is at a right angle to the long plane of the bone, in contrast to the oblique fractures that are complete fractures that occur at a plane oblique to the long axis of the bone. On the other hand, when a rotating force is applied along the axis of a bone, that is called a spiral fracture. A comminuted fracture is a break or a splinter of the bone into more than two fragments. The image in front of you will clear your concepts regarding these definitions. What is a segmental fracture? Well, it is a fracture composed of at least two fracture lines that together isolate a segment of bone as you can see in the image and in this usually a portion of the diaphysis of a long bone is involved. Now we will see what is a stellate fracture, a descriptive term for a bone fracture in which a fracture lines radiate from the central point of impact. It is mostly seen in flat bones such as that of skull and patella. The fractures previously discussed were complete fractures which means that complete bone breaks while in this slide we will discuss about incomplete fractures also known as green stick fractures a green stick fracture is a fracture in a young soft bone in which the bone bends and breaks green stick fractures occurs most often during infancy and childhood when bones are soft the name is by analogy with green fresh wood, which similarly breaks on the outside when bent.